So the first thing was what I mentioned just now. The second thing is what I love to do that, I, that I'm trying to get her to do is to, is to hire four people. Um, so the key thing is on social media, it's overwhelming. We got like 18 different platforms, right? Does everybody agree? Like, does, do you want to post on every platform? Not personally. Not personally, <laughs> no. Look, I'm talking to you all every single episode about how to be able to create a six-figure digital empire. And some of y'all haven't taken action yet. Y'all just, for some reason, life haven't slapped you in the face yet where it's like, yo, I'm tired of being at the place that I'm in right now. I'm tired of working my nine to five. I want to create a business. I want to become an entrepreneur. I'm tired of working for someone else when they don't even care about me. Look. I have something for you. I was working a nine to five, literally not even a year ago, or at, actually it's been, it's gonna be a year this year that I have been able to leave my nine to five to be able to come to you guys and show you how I was able to leave working at Papado, 101 Steak, Ruth Chris, all hospitality places y'all, to now being able to break 100K months Literally, this is what happened. Let me tell you. I was able to break 100K months in six months, to be more exact. And I'm going to show you exactly how I was able to do it and how exactly I was able to do it from working a job, creating multiple four to five figures while working my nine to five, to then leaving my nine to five, to then scaling my business. Y'all, I'm going to show you how to fund your business with not without using your own money. There's so many things in this book that I could be charging tens of thousands of dollars and I'm going to share with you how exactly I did it in t with, with pennies of the dollar. It cost $10, y'all. Worst case scenario is you learn something more and profit off of it. Okay? So look, click the link, the digitalempireebook.com. Get the ebook, y'all. You literally... Uh, just get the ebook. Hey, coming to the stage right now. I like this song. We got Chart Slayer. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I got uh, so many notes. Government government name is Marcus. So, so happy that you're here. So happy that uh, you decided to come to my third mastermind. I think Marcus is the person who's been in the room the longest. So shout out. Let's give Marcus a round of applause. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we met at a mastermind. I first met his business partner which is his mother at a mastermind with my girlfriend, the student loan doctor, Sonia Lewis. And uh, I gravitated to his mom and we hit it off. And then I organized an event for Sonia's community in Atlanta at um, the Slutty Vegan bar that they have, Bar Vegan. And then the, the whole family was there and Marcus mm -hmm. stood up and he spoke. And I was like, oh, she got sons and like the whole thing or whatever. And, and he was really cool when he spoke sounded super intelligent. I was like, who is this guy? Like, I need to know who he is. He's very, very smart. And so, you know, fast forward, we've been masterminding together and uh, we're business partners and we've been doing a lot of stuff. We've been able to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He he actually has <laughs> contributed to the success of my business. So I want to say thank you for investing in me, you know, and going hard for me like you always do. So this is why I'm here. <laughs> I appreciate you. So the reason I brought Marcus. Shout out team is because Ron's pain points is something Marcus can really speak directly to. He's very good in the areas of uh, just creative marketing campaigns, but then also like how to scale that team up. So we can just dive right in. For sure. Oh no, I got you, you keep that, I got, we bougie. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna answer a lot of questions that y'all had. Um, so um, to give you a little rough, so I'm the COO, right? So I'm, I'm her right there. So the job of the COO is to overall increase revenue, hire talent, um, really just scale the business as a whole. But a lot of people think that's all about systems and SOPs and automations, but that's, that's a myth. It's part of the process, but it's not the whole process, right? Um, so to answer your question on like content creation, right? Um, what I would do is a couple things, right? Uh, shout out pages is one of them, 
influencer marketing is another, which I'm pretty sure you're already familiar with, which is getting other people to wear your stuff, right? Um, but shout out pages is a key thing. Podcasts right now are the biggest um, to get in the, to really get huge marketing, huge uh, exposure to anybody's brand in here. Even if you have a new biz business, right? If you have a new business, um, and this solves fear of success too, because you'll be forced to be successful. Do you get what I'm saying? So you have to, to deal with the success. Um, so what would happen is you get in podcasts, you get in the room and you spit game. I mean that this, and you talk about yourself who the, the biggest thing we love doing is bragging about ourselves. Right? So we're all, um, we all love talking about ourselves. So in the podcast, that's all you're doing is giving game about what you've already experienced or what you've already known. And what that does is people resonate towards that and then you get leads. Now it's a matter of what you do with those leads. The key thing is when you're on these podcasts, you want to give something either for free or get an ebook or something that's an uh, easy entry for people to purchase between $10 and $47, right? And from there, right, um, people buy it. So it forces you to be successful. So the bigger name of the podcast and the more views they get, uh, the more likely that someone's going to actually purchase that product. So let's back up for a second. So how do they, how does this product translate onto the podcast? So they need to have. Yeah. So on the podcast, they don't need to have anything. They just, I mean, the only have, thing they, they do is promote. I mean, yeah, the podcast people, yeah, they have to have the link. I'm thinking, no, no, I'm, no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking, I'm thinking physical. I'm thinking you're talking physical. No, no, no. So, the, so when you're guesting on somebody's podcast, for those leads to come back to you, you, yes, need, to you need to have a link, uh, which a website, right? So you would need a, I would suggest a funnel. So there's a difference between a website and a funnel, right? So a website is like Shopify, Squarespace, you know, the Wix, all, a lot of these generic uh no names that you know but a funnel their job is to is to drive traffic and drive conversions which is for you to put money in your pocket but the key thing is like if you're going to walmart and let's say you only go in there for gum you know how many order bumps that's another that's the terminology yeah, that they have you go, through the line. you go through the line and you end up buying like 15 things that's a funnel especially at like marshall's yeah Mag, target y'all know women walmart. love y'all target okay oh my God. Yeah, I love y'all some Target. <laughs> See, I, you didn't start at a whole rumble now. Look at that. <laughs> or, or facts. Or if you go to a drive-thru, how many times they charge you for a sauce? And it used to cost for a sauce. That's a funnel. Do you get what I'm saying? So the key thing is you want to make it seem like it's no brainer for somebody to buy something else from you. So if I'm getting a, a jacket, what else do I need with that jacket? that's a part of the funnel. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like the key thing is when someone comes in from a podcast and you have that link there, right? Of your site or, or of your funnel, everything that after they opt in and put in their name, email, phone number, they're coming in buying whatever you're wanting to sell them. You have to make it seem like after they bought that, everything else afterwards is like a no brainer. Okay. With this ebook, um, mm -hmm. it's a little bit broad. Okay, cool. Let me put in a course in there to make it more explanatory, right? Oh, okay. Well, let's say, um, for example, a checklist, let's say your checklist is like $15, $17, right? And then you have something we like to call an order bump, which I like to say is a no brainer. Like I said, when you go to the McDonald's, it's like buying sauce. Like if you get fries or some nuggets, you need some sauce, right? If I get a checklist, what else do I need with the checklist? That's what you like to call an order bump. Does that make sense? And you would just sell that attached. That would be like $7. So you're like making things make sense that go along with that product to answer your question, um, to answer who had a systems question, your question, right? To go back to, um, systems, SOPs and et cetera. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, what's up? So, um, before we get off of the, the funnel and Ron's marketing, oh, okay. so I want to come from the PR standpoint of having that funnel and that link when it comes to having a product like yours, we talked earlier in the year about having an affiliate link, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. with a product-based service or a product-based company that has apparel, you're selling things that, that we wear, what speaks volumes to the journalists nowadays is the affiliate link because yep. you're trying to make money off of everybody that they bring on to their news site. Mm -hmm. The news cycle has changed so much because of social media and digital marketing. 
So the media outlets are, you know, really struggling to make money. So nowadays they only want to do big stories, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like beating the pavement, talking to my journalists and my media outlets say, like, run this story, run this story. But luckily I have good contacts. They're like, why would I run this story? Who's going to come on my website to look at this? Like I need to drive traffic to my site so that people can then purchase something. So when you have that affiliate link and making sure that the product is placed almost anywhere that it can go. So if it can be sold on Amazon, if it can be sold on Walmart, if it, if it can be sold with Nordstrom, like all these big, mm -hmm. what they call them? Platforms. Box, box, box stores, big yep, box stores. Yep, 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 You know, yep. figuring out the way that we can sell our merchandise with them makes us look big. Mm -hmm. Then we have that affiliate link when we send it to a journalist and we say, oh yeah, we're, we're at all these places being sold. Oh, bet, let's run the play. Cause now they can place your link there and they can make money too because everybody wants to make money. So when you are going to media outlets with your <laughs> products and services, have that affiliate set up. So inside the funnel, there's a feature where you can then create an affiliate. I invited each of you guys to be my affiliates here at the mastermind. You could bring people to this mastermind and immediately you will make 20% off of that sale. It will go directly into your bank account by you just having a link. Mm -hmm. So doing affiliate marketing is another way to make income without working hard. So I just wanted to uh, emphasize that before you move forward. No, that's cool. Um, I was spot on this. I said two things. So the first thing was what I mentioned just now. The second thing is what I love to do that I, that I'm trying to get her to do is to have is to hire four people. Um, so the key thing is on social media is overwhelming. We got like 18 different platforms, right? Does everybody agree? Like, does do you want to post on every platform? Not personally. Not personally. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? So I want to be represented. Right. So I can exactly. Be and that's key. <laughs> that's key, right? So I'm, so there's there's two things within that specific thing that I want to break down. The first thing is to hire four people, and that's a social media manager. All these are virtual assistants, right? A social media manager, a copywriter, a video editor, and a graphic designer. Right, and I'm gonna explain why those are important right now. And where are we hiring them from? We're hiring, you can hire them from any. I hire from the Philippines. I uh, I have friends that hire from Ghana. I have people. I have somebody from Dubai. Um, I mean, there's so many different ways you can hire. You can go on like onlinejobs.ph. Can you repeat that again? Yeah. Oh, the four pe four people we need. Yeah, yeah. So the video editor, the graphic designer, the copywriter, and the social media manager. Those are the four people you need. And this is to run your social media on autopilot for you to never be involved again. The only thing that you'll probably be involved in you is maybe some pre approval Yeah, exactly. You will then become the content creator. So you're yeah. out, you know, doing videos, doing photos and things like that. And, and you have to have the content to dump to the team yep. so they can take an edit and, and then disperse on your behalf. So you 100%. become a full time content creator. Right. And that's Not what you want to do. Not full time, but you get what I'm saying. No, you full time at this point. That's your role. Yeah, yeah. You like, making videos. You know, you doing the long form. You doing the short form. You doing absolutely. the photo shoots and all the things. And it's easier, and it's not as complicated, and it's simple. Yeah. And it actually becomes fun. Go What's going on? Questions. Yeah, yeah. I'm here to ask questions. Because um, this is what I find. Like I've been doing everything myself. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to build a team. It's just I can't do it all myself. Yeah, yeah. And I'm also I don't know, like, I'm not sure your name over there, but I'm like close to 50 so like it's just getting harder and harder for yeah. me to keep up with this stuff <laughs> like yeah. on the computer I don't even want to touch my computer <laughs> she's a true ball like, like, just get creative and like yeah yeah like, 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 like I don't own a laptop dog they, 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 so they got the laptop. I can answer that question for you right yeah I can answer that question oh no go ahead so I want to know that but also like so these overseas because i've been hearing about yep. them, you can hire them yep. they can do like manage your social media absolutely okay absolutely and then what was the answer? You so were, in your case what you were just talking about is you would need a her process, or a me right which is in which is you have two different people most people in here are visionaries but you also have integrators i'm an integrator she's an integrator people who actually are there to work in your business it's a rare case that you're both right like i can be both but I prefer to just be the integrator in that sense. But the thing is, you might need to hire somebody in the Philippines who's an operations manager. Now you, now, you can hire people that's a form of a COO. It doesn't have to be a COO or somebody that operates like a COO, 
right? So in your case, if you don't if you don't have a partner right now, you could hire an operations manager or a director of operations. Or it might in your case, I'd say if you're in a zero to one million phase, just hire a project manager or an executive assistant. Those can be your acting COOs. Does that make sense? Philippine, they, I mean, virtual assistants are running maybe around starting at $500, $600 a month. What's going on, family? You guys already know I appreciate you for checking out this episode. So you guys know that I've been trading and building high level skill sets for years now. You see me on my Forex journey my stock investment journey, my portfolio journey, a <laughs> day in the life of everything. And so what I wanna do is I wanna give back to you. I wanna make sure that you all learn everything that's in my brain. So what I have done is specifically in regards to skill sets is I've created a course, uh, like a whole course. Like this is the best thing that I've ever come out with since sliced bread, <laughs> right? It's a Forex course on how exactly to build wealth create high level skill sets and I want to teach it to you. I want to give back. It's not even like it's super affordable. Like you could like your daughter could do it. Yes, a five year old could do it. And that's what I want to help you guys do. I want to give back to you. So if you want to learn exactly how to help build high level skill sets, I want you to click this link right here. This link is going to break down everything for you and literally change your whole life. So go check it out. Check out the trade syndicate. Check out the way that we do things. Check out the chart slayer. Check out your boy. All right. See you on the next one. Per person. So let's pause right there. Mm -hmm. How many people think that they can afford two hundred and fifty dollars every two weeks? One, two, three, four, five, six. And these are full time. Yes, for one. That's for one person. How many people? How many? You need multiple. Yeah. Two fifty a month. Bi weekly for one person working 40 hours in your business. Dedicated to you. 40? You can find right here. Yeah, yeah. So Dedicated to you. Like, I want to sign up. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many people? <laughs> so, so, wait, I got another question for y'all. Then I'm going to take your question. So, how many people think that they can afford $500 per month? For one person to work for you. I mean, the same hand should go up. It's bi weekly, right? It's the same app. They are, they are dedicated yeah. staff. 40 hours dedicated to you. To That's no one else. Positivity. Content queen. Wait, 40 hours a week? Or 40, 40 hours, hours a week. week. Full time person. Wow. <laughs> let, me, let me see this. Can we afford this? Can we afford this? Stand up, stand up if you can afford this. Stand up if you can afford this. How many, how many businesses we scaling today? Okay. How many? You can get two? How many can you get? You can do one. <laughs> she can do three. Okay. We doing two. All right. We gonna do one. And y'all got one. Cause we, all right. I need y'all to clap for y'all because we scaling businesses today. I need y'all to clap for yourselves. We scaling businesses today. Okay. No more posting on social media. Okay. No more answering emails or looking at the people. Okay. Facts. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm glad. Woo, we got we look, we accomplished one thing today. Yeah. All righty. Look at so, y'all. Y'all done. We done, right? We good. Yeah. Your business is solved. All, All y'all businesses is solved. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm gonna tell you how to hire them. Y'all mommy showing you how to hire them? Because a lot of people don't know how to hire. Wait, is this the presentation? No. Okay, cool. No, no, no. no. It's not my presentation. I'm just uh, gonna show you all. How to hire some VA. This is just free value, right? So I'm gonna show you the short way. I'm gonna show you my way, and then I'm gonna show you the shorter way for you to just be able to get it done today. Does that make sense? So my way is very extensive. One is because I'm not only doing it for me, I'm also doing it for clients, right? So like all her team right there all came from us, right? There's some, I, I believe we're getting Javon's team. If we, I know we've had a consultation before. Um, and there's some other people that was in the mastermind Christina. that Christina, yeah, she got some, there's some uh, other people that got some, Darlena I can't remember. Some. Erica Our got, some, Erica, Erica got one. Yeah. So like there's also do it for clients. So awesome, my awesome professionals. Yeah. Wonderful. wonderful. All working with, at, with people. us and everyone in here. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, my process is a lot more extensive, right? So I want you to keep that in the back of your head. That's the disclaimer. So how mine works is I think of. Everyone, does anyone like to sell or does anyone know sales? I love to sell. Does anyone know sales? Like you have to sell something in order to make money, right? Yeah. So think, 
Right. So think of, you know how you, you you've heard of lead generation? So think of sales. So the, the key thing is I have to sell to a client. But when it comes to hiring, I'm selling to the candidate. I'm selling to them about our company. So we like to call that client acquisition when it comes to traditional sales. But I like to call this in hiring talent acquisition. Does that make sense? So this has to deal with, uh, we like to hire application generators, like application generation, like lead generation. So it's the same thing, right? So you hire people that are dedicated to specific platforms. I like to hire specialists. I don't like hiring people, five, six people in one person because they're not gonna be productive on my team. I like to hire only graphic designers, only video editors, because those are the people that are dedicated to you. So when it comes to application generators, I like to hire a person that specializes in Indeed specializes in Upwork, specializes in onlinejobs.ph. So I know that these people specialize in these platforms, right? So these are called application generators. These are the people that I have on my team. So what happens is you, and, and in your case, you would be the specialist. Does that make sense? So the next thing is I go through like a screening process, right? So everybody probably will go through this. As soon as you put your application out there, you then have to talk to them. I mean, is that, I mean, is that simple? Right. Um, from there, I, ha I have vetting involved in this. Right. So the vetting is um, you have to go through like a test assignment. I have to see that you, you talk good on the on the call, but I need to see that you actually can work. So there's like a test assignment that I do. And then we go to like the skills test, which is where we talk about um, this is where I sell the candidate. Hey, this is what our company's core vision, mission and values are. This is where we strive to uh, to become. This is our vision is up here. We're looking for you to solve this problem. And this is our fit. I mean, this is where you fit. Right. And then from there, we have something called a CEO interview. Most people don't have CEO interviews. Right. Most people just and in your case, the CEO interview would be the first contact with y'all. For me, I have a team of like 30 people. So mine is I'm a little I'm last in the process. Right. So then after that, then we go through the selection process and then from there. Now, in your case, yours doesn't have to be extensive. And I shorten mine up a little bit just so it's not super, super long. But in your case, when I first started, this is the way that I would do it. Right. I would, of course, go on these platforms, Upwork, online jobs, Indeed, remote jobs, all these different platforms that exist. You can Google them. It's really it's, it's out there. Right. And I would put that job description out there. But the key thing is your, the job description is the first selling point. Like I would, what we have is, Hey, are you, it's, it's very like intricate and, and funny. Like, Hey, are you tired of struggling to, to going from freelance gig to gig? I'm start, I'm solving a problem right there. They had a problem. Now I'm stating the problem. Hey, are you struggling with X, Y, and Z? Oh, if you are, well, we have a position called social currencies or um, whatever your company is. And we, we do X, Y, and Z, and we're looking for this person to solve this problem in our business. If you're interested, click the link here and apply. Right. And then from there, you know, they click the link and then you go on a screening interview with them. The screening interview, I would be, you know, very intricate in questions. I would go from the screening interview and then have a ranking process for all the candidates and then call it a day. Very simple. So application, screening interview, rank them and then pick. Right. Very, very simple. I wouldn't go super extra. So ranking them is like the top 20 people you have. So uh, select five of them out of those bunch or select two of them out of those bunch that you want that you're interested in. Maybe consult with another person to say, hey, this person is X, Y and Z like you do for me. You like, hey, um, what do you think about this person? What do you think about that person? And those are the people that you consult and then you pick one that works for your that, that fits your core about your core values, your vision, mission and values. And you go from there, right? And so it's very simple. The skill set too. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. The is skill set is important. Yeah. There's usually a trial period, um, but I like to call it a probationary period, though. Yeah, some sort of period like that. Yeah, yeah. So for me, when I am hiring, I'm very specific about the type of professional and profile I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I know my personality. I like to work with people who have experience. So I'm not really in position right now to work with a lot of like new talent i want them to come with some level of experience and then i can yeah. add on top of that so uh you just want to you know be very specific in your job description of the type of talent you're looking for how many years of experience mm -hmm. what skill sets do they need and if you're hiring outside of the country it's important that they can write in english and that they can speak in english because they will be representing an american-based company yep you know so things like that would be really important and i always ask for 
examples to their profiles and their work samples and things like that. I wish that I could get referrals, but I don't know, maybe Mark- You can get referrals. A lot of my team is referrals. Just like, ask them. Yeah, I, you know- Hey, Zill, really if you got referrals. any referrals, and then no, you, no, meaning that when the profile, when the candidate comes in, I want them to have referrals so I can check their referrals. You mean references? References. Oh, okay, Sorry. cool. I was about to say I referrals. Meant, yeah, just asking for referrals. Like, <laughs> my references. whole team is referrals. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you references, like, yeah. When we're hiring here in the States, we always have to provide a reference check yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would definitely do that. That'd be a little difficult, though, starting off. Yeah. Because their numbers I, I is different. I, I could, you, but, you know, they can't. So what I would, what I do is I hire my first candidates, my first candidate, and then I have them call the reference because they already have the cult. They already have their numbers. Yeah. Like they already are, they're in the Philippines. They can call them easier than I can call them. So I would have them call. Plus it helps me delegate that task, yeah. right? So I don't have to always be involved. And so like same thing what you were saying about like the team course or whatever. Like we have team. Like you were saying, there's like three different ways to. Um, and you talked about it, verbal, written, and recorded when it comes to explaining what needs to be done. Yeah. Right. So like the recorded part is like the delegation part. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, and this is a hack and I do the same thing. I literally, y'all don't want to do nothing like you. Like if I could delegate texting, I would like, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, my man be chilling. I'm like, <laughs> over here, he'd be like, I don't want to do, she got mad if she was like, Marcus, you ain't never working. <laughs> yup. <laughs> I'm never working. <laughs> you remember her saying that? I'd be so jealous. She'd be like. I'm chilling. I'm like, well, good night. <laughs> I'm literally just going over end of day reports. All right, you did this, you did this. And there are some, there are times when I'm in the business, you know what I mean? But like, like I like to split half of my day. Half is on, half is in. And like, they've done a very good job at scaling their company, yeah. like their family business. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how many people work for y'all? 30, 30 right now. 30. So we, and we're how hiring more. That, how much is that payroll like a month? About 10,000 a month. It hurt just saying it, y'all. It's not bad. All of them are overseas. Oh, well, no, 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 no. I lied. I lied. Uh, 26 are overseas. Or 28 is overseas. And then we have, like, the media. Like, I would say the media team. So she's involved. Then we have videographer and photographer. So that's 27 then. 27. Then you got, like a, 30. like, a couple sales people here, too. Oh, I forgot about that. I count them as VAs, though. So like if you're on, if you're if I'm really working with you on Zoom, you're like a VA to me. You know what I mean? But if I'm like in person with you a lot, then you're classified as like here. You know what I'm saying? But like like my closers, I count as VAs because we're always on on Zooms. Even though we have a we have a Bruce that's you know he's in Atlanta. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And we're hiring more in Atlanta because I want to build a like culture is important to me. Like and with us, mm -hmm. like. So there are some people I want to have in Atlanta to build that culture. Like my vision yeah. is very big with our company. Like I want to have it like an MLM business oh, where really? you have annual conferences and workshops and like, so my team loves it when I talk about this, like, yo, I want to have this, this, that, and that. They're like, okay, how can we get it done? What do I need to do <laughs> to make this happen? And so like, we have like, I don't want to touch too much into it, but like there's key yeah. things. Cause I'm going to talk about it in the presentation, but it's like key things we do to like push the team to strive, even for a new business owner, like like yourself, and even for people who's trying to get systems. Yeah, it's like a, I feel like we could do a whole day just yeah. on this aspect. I'm gonna shorten it for the presentation though. Yeah. And we can ask questions throughout. You, know, you can ask me questions throughout, but. Thank you, Trishland. Let's give it up for Trishland. Hey family, thank you so much for checking out this episode. I really, really do appreciate it. So I get this question a lot of, hey, how do you get your family on board on everything that you're doing? Your family's everywhere, you're traveling everywhere. This brand of family is huge. And so I wanna teach you guys how to create a family business and build a true legacy for your family. And in order to do so, if you wanna learn exactly how I do that, I want you to check out socialcurrencies.net slash family actually book a call, see exactly how we can assist you in creating wealth for your entire family and breaking that generational curse. We are strongly against generational curses and we want to break generational poverty and build generational wealth and not just wealth, but true wealth. And so I want to help you guys go ahead, tap in again. The site is socialcurrencies.net slash family. And I will see you on the flip side.